Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to make Maya's viewport look very pretty with a lot of Zootools tools, but lots of stuff to cover here. We've got the asset browsers, we're going to take some free rigs off the internet and we're going to sort of polish them up a little bit, add them to our libraries uh, so that you can see that the viewport's all nice. Here's the lovely Ang rig. This is a fantastic rig that you can download and uh, you can animate in real time with these viewport settings. We can easily add icons to our browsers. Uh, you can make your own. Here we have the cyborg rig. That's another great one. And trying out different HDRIs with our light presets here. So this is all rendering in Arnold. And now you've got the lovely ray tracer. I see a lot of animators out there, you know, still doing viewport play blasts. If you've got a nice GPU, Arnold renders beautifully fast and it looks so lovely. So we've got our focus puller tool there as well. And we've got a convert shader script. So you can take uh, the Lamberts that sit on these rigs. These are third party free rigs and you can convert them to surface standard shaders, which have, you know, nice subsurface scattering and all the loveliness when you render in Arnold or other renderers. Okay. Hello everybody. This one here, this uh, is another lo-fi tutorial and uh, I'm going to show you how to set up a scene like this in viewport lighting with some uh, free rigs. So we're going to explore the assets uh, browser in Zootools and we're going to add some free rigs to it and create your own library. So this is not included in Zootools. These rigs are third party, but just for your own private use, these are all educational rigs. You can create your own library. And I thought I'd show you this too, because if you're in a studio, you can do the same, but for your in-house rigs. So um, it's really handy. Let's have a look at this. So this is the Natalie uh, rig that is included in Zootools. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. So if we come into the Zoo Rigs Hive and I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So here we have a whole bunch of rigs. That this scene here is this, this one here. I've included it um, in this uh, pack. We've also got um, some manual rigs. So you can see the octopus and the ball. And we've got also uh, some deprecated rigs from Zoo One. These will be soon in Hive. Uh, we can do all these rigs now. We just uh, need to actually do it. So these will be um, included in Hive as well once they become Hive rigs. Um, I've got the rigs free. So this is what we'll be creating um, here. Now I'm just going to concentrate on the Aang character here from Avatar Airbender. And um, we're going to see, you know, him from scratch. We're going to to build this folder and make these three icons and uh, this one is the rig, so that's just stock standard um, that comes in the zip download when you download the rig. Uh, this guy here is an animation start, so that's with the scene referenced in, ready to go for the animators. So if you need to start animating, you just double click that and you're, you're off with the scene already referenced. With a nice light setup and uh, a nice viewport light setup similar to this one. And we've got uh, a standard surface rig, um, which renders really nicely in Arnold with a bit of subsurface. I'll see if I can get that working as well here. Um, I'm going to go through this pretty well. So what we've got here, uh, before I get into that, I'll just show you actually. Um, so this is the render of Aang, as you can see in Arnold. And we can convert him to Redshift uh, Render Man um, as well as V-Ray. Um, and then we've got uh, the light setup. So this is the, the viewport light setup. Now this is what it looks like just, you know, straight out of the box. So you can see there's quite an improvement in the lighting already, and you can animate in real time with this, just like I'm animating with Nat. This one, I've just put a white background, so they're customizable too, um, but you can do dark backgrounds as well. Um, here we have the Deadpool rig here by uh, <coughs> by uh, Keel Figgins, uh, which has got all his stuff. The Ang rig, by the way, um, is by a bunch of people. Uh, there's the credits there. Uh, we've got Mia Prey, Sega Aeron, and might even be someone else that's involved with that. But um, there's the rig that you can download it there. I'll put these links um, in the in the credits of the, of the YouTube video. And then we've also got um, Trong as well. He does a bunch of rigs. Um, that's just this guy here. I'll also put the, the links for some of these other ones that I found, but you know, there's a lot of rigs um, around and you just have to Google, you know, best free Maya rigs and you can find a lot of stuff. A uh, little bit of, you know, uh, uh, Thing is we're, we're going to release Nat as a free rig as well, once we just uh, need a little bit more features in her and then she'll be ready and we can put her up on the web for free as well. So you can sort of download the scene, um, even if you do not have Zootools in the future, um, but we won't make everything free. There'll be a few rigs that you, you'll have to buy Zootools for. Um, 
All right, so let's get started on this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pretend that we've downloaded this rig. And I've just got um, three things here. So I've, I've made a folder here called Community Rigs. It's on my D drive in my Dropbox. And we've called this the Ang Rig. And then we've got um, the, the textures and the rig. And this is important if you want this to be not in a project folder. If you've got it in a project folder, it's absolutely fine. Um, a lot of times I just uh, dump all my rigs into a single folder and I put all the textures in there. That's how we're doing it in Zootools 2 is we just dump all of our files into one folder. That way all the textures and referenced rigs are found and whatnot. A um, bit, bit easier. But if you are on a network or something like that, you do want to think about this. And do you have it in a project directory? Or do you have a locked network where the relative and the absolute paths will always work? But in this case, we're just going to do it this way. Um, really good, simple way for free rigs. Um, so that's it there. Uh, we've got the Ang rig folder ready to go. So let's add this folder now into ZooTools. So the way that we can do that is come to our little folder and we want to add a new folder. Okay. So it'll give us a little error here. <coughs> I want to fix that actually, but it just is telling us, hey, just don't select anything because you can actually parent folders to the rigs folder, but I'm just going to select nothing and then we'll do it again. And that way we can just come in and find that Ang rig folder. In fact, I'm going to come up and I'm actually just going to make it like literally the community rigs folder, that one here. When you load that one in, um, you'll see that the community rigs pops up there with one icon and it's found one MA file. And then we can drag that into the rigs, you know, uh, directory here. If we select on a category, that's a category. So we can make any sort of category at any time. Um, let's just create something. Categories are just organizers. Okay, so this is not a folder directory structure um, like you might be familiar with. This is all only within Zootools. So these paths here, you can rename them and everything. So I could just call that some rigs and even have a space and stuff like that. But the path and the folder to disk is still, you know, D Dropbox. Um, my assets and then community rigs. So these are um, just labels, they're not actually the path. Um, if you come into our Zoo Preferences folder, just worth showing that um, in these guys are the Maya scenes and so it has like the alias. Um, and if we come far enough there, there's the sum rigs and then there's the path for it. So we sort of like keep track of the alias separately to the path. Um, so the categories themselves are also arbitrary so you can just make them within this and um zoo doesn't really doesn't really mind too much um let's just put that over there and so we've just unparented it and now we can select all the rigs these are absolutely all the rigs that are in zoo plus the free rigs and the bought rigs that i've built uh let's just click on you can click on you know a couple of folders so we could have like the zoo rigs from zoo one as well as hive and uh, now they all list together uh, so the browser sort of works in this way. Uh, if we come into rigs free, so actually I want to come into some rigs, this one, and I'm going to rename that back to community rigs, the one I just built. Uh, we've got this ang rig now, so we want to add an icon and let's do that. So let's just double click this. This is literally a Maya file. So we're just opening that now. Um, there he comes in. And this guy, you know, if we want to do a screenshot of him uh, to, for the icon, now we can just go snapshot replace. So if we put that here, um, we can change the background maybe to a dark gray. I, I usually like a dark gray or something, and we can just fit him nicely into that. That's 512 by 512 by default. I usually just stay with those sorts of uh, defaults. Uh, there's a little, little bit of the grid in there, so we can get rid of that with, uh, that's my D hotkey in ZooTools, and then, just roughly, we can snapshot that. Now we can snapshot and change that at any stage. And that goes, goes for multiple icons too. So we can just zoom in on him if we're, if we're not really liking um, what we originally had. Oh, there, so it's a really cool screenshot tool. So now that we've got that, uh, this is a Lambert based rig. So all of the, um, the shaders are Lambert's on him, but different rigs will come in with different settings. I think the Deadpool one was interesting because it's, been built in such an old version of Maya that uh, when I brought the Deadpool rig in to um, ZooTools and we put the fixed viewport on it, it's erroring. And it's just because it's such an old, old version of Maya. So um, sometimes if you want to be safe, you do want to import rigs 
into the scene. Now, because we're in Maya 2023, there's a lot of color space stuff happening in the back of Maya, and these are all from older versions of Maya. I thought I'd just show you this just as a thing. So if, we, if we we're in the Deadpool rig, I'd actually want to import it into the Maya scene and then save it out again. So it sort of cleans out all the stuff. If you do save rigs in 2023, they, they're not very well backwards compatible. I mean, they will open, but it's not, it's a bit nasty. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, so if we were to import this guy, um, yeah, this should work pretty well because he's got textures on him. However, you will notice that uh, the colors on him, even if we have the textures on, uh, his skin color is kind of okay. But if we zoom in here, you can see how actually the his his jacket is like very, very different um, orange. And you might be like, what's going on there? So there's a number of things that's happening in the back of my eye, and I want to do a specific separate video of that. Um, but to I give you a very quick overview in zoo tools, like this is basically the new ASUS workflow, um, that Maya has by default, but this rig was built in an old version of Maya. And most of the rigs are currently the way you don't want to be in the new ASUS workflow because the colors are, are obviously way out. So to revert to an older version of, um, Maya in zoo tools, you just come in here to the linear sRGB note tone map there. And that will fix it back to whatever. Now the colors still don't match. And you're like, what's going on? That's just because of our, um, uh, our grade. I call this the grade, but um, we'll find the technical word for it. It's the view, I think. Um, and we can come into the view transform here and just switch it back to SRGB. And now we've got the exact um, color space that the guy was in before. So that's when you're importing rigs into 2023 when you open them by default if the, it Maya sort of knows it's been built in an older program so the colors are good but if you import rigs into the um scene and i believe this includes referencing you have to be aware of these things so i just thought i'd show that now just to show you what that button's doing um so i'm not black boxing this for you um you can come into Maya, into the color management settings and this is it like linear uh color space was the the stuff we were using in 2020 and below SIGB is the monitor that always remains the same. And then the view space is by default ASUS um, SDR video, which we have now switched to untone map SIGB. So this is a little bit confusing, but the basics are of it. If we come into the renderer here, um, this is the default color space for, um, you can see the, the colors have gone weird again. This one here, ASUS SIGB SDR video, that is the default color space for 2022 and above. And then and this guy is in 2020 um, color space and you can see what that's changing. So if I go back to the SDR video, it's really just changing the rendering space there. This view um, will change only when you're here. So uh, we could go into um, untone map space here, but you'll see that even though we're in untone map spaces, that orange is still very different from what we had. So you really do need to change this ASUS back to uh, linear rec 709 for that to actually be correct. So a little bit of color space stuff there. This is really annoying, but hopefully ASUS will be like the default way just out of interest too. I'm still working a lot in linear color because Photoshop and things like After Effects don't natively support ASUS yet. So this is really annoying because, you know, you've got Nuke and um, DaVinci Resolve are supporting ASUS, but uh, Adobe products aren't yet. So I'll still render out a lot in linear color space just if I'm using Adobe products because, you know, it's hard to open the images <laughs> in them. So a little bit of that. I'll do a separate video on that just out of interest. I thought I'd bring that up. All right. So now that we're here and we've got our rig and, and we're cool, this has actually been saved fine because it was saved in the old version of mine and we loaded it up. And if you double click on this, you'll see that um, the color space is sort of different. It sort of knows it's in an old version of Maya and actually puts it in a different mode. Interestingly, like here in the color management stuff, you've got different settings here. Anyway, it's the display is legacy and you've got SRGB gamma there. Anyway, don't worry about that too much. Um, if you're opening old rigs, it defaults it's only if you're importing and referencing that you need to do the thing that I just showed you. All right. So now we want to have a pretty looking viewport. Yeah. So, uh, let's come into a new scene. And we're going to reference this guy in. So here down the bottom of our um, browser here, we've got reference. So that's what we want if it's a rig. So now we're just referencing that file into the scene. Uh, one thing that I often do in the outline, and you'll see it has quite a long name, like um, Ang Rig. If we come into the reference editor, which is this guy here, create reference options, that's 
um, control shift and R, sorry. I'll usually just click on that guy there and just call it A or something very simple. That will just shorten, you know, this to like A1 or A2 or something and um, our rig namespace will go smaller. Just, it's a bit better that way. So let's now see that we, yes, we have got bad colors. We need textures on to see him properly. And we can see that we need to do a bunch of stuff. So uh, let's do that again, just to fix it. And we'll come across to linear no tone map. Everything's okay, but we're still in ASUS. So we go to untone map sRGB and there we are, we're matching. Okay, now we can already save this scene because this is referenced, you know, ready to go. It's a different scene. So now let's come in here and we'll go save. And I want to call this, um, you know, Aang. And then we'll go, uh, what do I want? I want to call him um, Anim Start. So I call this Anim Start. And then I'll often put like the a suffix on this, like LMBT for Lamberts. That's just so I know what shade is happening because in Zoo we support many renderers. So this is really for us. And that will um, work in our filters, which is down here. So I can show you that. Probably in that rig too, I would rename it as well. I won't do that now because I've already referenced it in, but it's a good idea to call it AngRig LMBT for Lambert um, there. So this is um, saving now. Somehow V-Ray has got into my system. Just ignore V-Ray there. And we've got our new Anim Start um, folder. So that means that, you know, if we double click this guy, that is the original rig that we had. So, you know, that's not referenced. And now if we click this guy and discard that, uh, you'll see that Aang will now be referenced and ready to go and in the right color space. Now I have noticed it keeps switching back this. That's different from what we did there. We just, you know, to get the better colors, you just have to make sure that's in sRGB and we're in the right color space there. Now I won't take a screenshot yet. What I'm gonna do is create a nice light setup. So in ZooTools, if you double click that and make it small, any new window that you open will pop out in a different window. If that's open, you know, tools will open at the bottom of it. So I just want this to pop up in a new window. Fixed viewport is the tool that we're after. Uh, actually, this is a little bit different. I, I will show you this very quickly. If you have a scene and you just want it to look pretty, basically you use this tool. Now you'll see here too, Hang is like going all you know, we're starting to see through him. That's a very common Maya bug. We've got a fix for that in ZooTools right there. Make it that middle one, make it cl clipping planes 0 0.9 to 5,000. That means it won't go through. But otherwise, like here in the viewport, we can now just go create reparent light. That's actually that little drop down too, which will immediately take effect. And now we've created a nice light setup. And you'll see this here if we bring on the controls. We've got a nice sun and we've got an IBL that's lighting the scene that can actually turn around. That will be a much more obvious if it was a metallic character. You'll see that it's a little bit blown out for this guy. That is because of one setting that we're using Lamberts. So they're not calibrated to Arnold. So I use pretty much always in Maya 2023 now, the standard surface shaders, they're just much better. That's what you saw Nat with before. Um, everything then calibrates much better to Arnold um, and Redshift and all these other renderers. Um, but to fix this, we can just come into the advanced options and there's a little setting here that we can just switch over to Lambert and Blin. And that just like darkens the lights to match Blins and Lamberts uh, a little bit better there. Not absolutely perfect, but it works pretty well. So we can now um, sort of double click and get that one down. That's the lights, that's the assets. I'm gonna come into the channel box now and just show you a couple of things. So what we've got here is we've got a shadow. So we this is really good when you're animating because you want to see shadows, you don't want to see whatever. Now, the good thing about this shadow is that it's got a nice fall off on it. So um, let's have a look at this. Now, uh, Render Man has popped in, so that's really annoying for us. But uh, Render Man should not be on. I don't know how that popped up. But uh, we've got the directional intensity and we've got the HDR right, intensity. So we can now like make this brighter and darker depending on what we like. And another thing that I like to do, and it looks quite good on this guy, is we can go into the Unity tone map. This is just a different grade. Um, and you can see his skin colors just ch change a little bit. So you can see um, from the sRGB um, to the Unity tone map, it's just looking a little bit nicer to my eye. Now, something about that is that you do get a little bit of anti-aliasing if you're not on the untone map. So a lot of people complain in the newer versions of Maya that the anti-aliasing of the wireframes and whatever is a bit ugly. 
that's if you're using sRGB or these guys, it's usually like relatively okay. But um, the the Unity tone maps can add a, a bit of anti-aliasing to your wireframes and stuff. Just be aware of that. But I tend to put up with it in, in preference for a nicer grade on my image. So here in this tool, I'm going to go through this really quickly because there's a lot of settings in the fixed viewport tool. But we can make just the directional light more intense. And then the HDR light, we can switch it off or we can bring up its fill as well. So I like that there. That was pretty good. So to delete that light setup, we can just grab this tool. Usually I don't have it big. It's only because I needed that Lambert setting. And we can delete that light setup. And that's sort of being gone. Other things that we can do, if you recreate it, it's dark again. So you just have to make it a bit brighter. Um, other things that you can do is that you've got some different settings here. So this one is actually medium sharp, uh, medium soft 1K with 1K lights, but you can make it a, a much more high quality um, scene. So we can go soft 2K lights and I'll explain this in the tool, maybe have a look at the tool help. And you see it's taking a little bit longer now and I'm going to grab that. And so we can see that sun now. And you can see that this is just a bit of a nicer shadow and everything's a bit sharper. But remember with the higher settings, that your viewport does slow down. So depending on how fast your rig is, um, it can chug a little bit in the highest settings um, there. So that's this preset of like um, soft 2K. But the advantage that we've got here now is that if we do use like our soft angle light, you'll see what the light's doing is we have this lovely kind of soft light that we can bring it bends a little bit at a certain point, but you've got like sharper shadows down the bottom and then a softer light coming through to the back. And that's what area lights and sort of overcast sunny days do with that soft angle. And it gives you a bit of an expensive feel um, rather than um, the default generic my light. If you want super sharp shadows, um, which is like outdoor lighting, then you can come to super soft or um, just sharp 4K is pretty fast. Um, so that's now got super sharp shadows. You can see the difference and that will um, keep your viewport speedy. I mean, super sharp 4K and, and soft 1K generally on my box, which is quite a few, is a good box, but it's quite a few years old now, um, generally works pretty well. If you want these ultra light stuff, you can go like low model. Um, we'll just keep it, you know, the textures off and it's just trying to keep everything really um, as fast as possible, but it matches to um, the, the standard surface shader. Uh, we've got shadows, so you can just add the shadow in there, which doesn't come with Maya. Again, this will match to surface standard shadows or shaders, sorry, or it will match to Lambert's and Blinds, um, which are the old school shaders. Uh, and then, you know, sharp 4K is the def is um, a pretty good light. Now you're introducing your IBL. Um, your viewport will slow down a touch, but I find it's pretty, pretty good. And then you've got soft 4K, which is the default. So if you just press that button, that's what you're doing with the soft light by default, and it just doesn't burn your eyes with that sharpness of the shadows, especially on the face and stuff like that too. Um, again, we're in neutral tone map. Uh, now that every time you use that guy, it is rebuilding the light. So we just have to come in here and I'm going to grab both of those and just with control, middle click drag, just make it a little bit brighter and we can see where we've got nice viewport lighting. Now you saw the grid and everything before um, that I had. There's a few different things that we can do with the grids. One of the things is here, um, we've got this shader presets guy, which is yet another tool. Um, I'm just middle click dragging on the tool to move it around. Um, if you come to the shader presets, we've got this zoo planes thing. Now you'll only see, you'll see a lot less guys here cause I'm adding more um, as, as I'm going and you can see it's work in progress, but you'll see a couple. Um, if you just like select that plane now, you can double click on that guy there and uh, it will create that dark grid that you saw with Natalie there. So. Now um, you're starting to look nice. What that is, is just a, a grid shader. Like it's actually a procedural, Myers procedural grid shader. And it has this lovely fall off with an opacity that blends nicely into your background. Now, if you're in the Nat scene, it's basically this with a black background. So I'm just hitting Alt B there to make it black. Um, and we're in a really nice place in terms of things. One last thing that I like to do is that this is the uni tone map, but we can contrast it up even a little bit with this contrast guy here. So you can contrast that up a bit more. What that's doing is moving these two guys. So it's exposure and gamma, and then it's doing those together in an intuitive way. So it's like contrasted. And then this is your global exposure. So these two are sort of changing these guys, but in a much more intuitive way. Um, so you can sort of see that 
we've got a pretty nice looking scene now where we can do some stuff. You can grab your grid and make it bigger and smaller um, there. And to get rid of this little um, UI thing, uh, that is uh, the viewport controls these guys here. It's gone a bit weird because they're mixed in the rig. But these bottom two, if you turn those off, they will just get rid of those. Um, if you're seeing the IBL too, which is quite common, like you'll see the IBL when you load the scene up, that is uh, because we've got lights on. So that guy there, and that will remove that light too. Now on my hotkeys, that's D and the lights can switch on and off. Sometimes we see the, the HDR light in the background and sometimes we don't. Um, interesting that we're not here. Usually you do, so I'll find out what's going on there a bit later. So there you go. We've set up a really nice uh, viewport there. Um, another thing that I'd say is if you want to delete that setup, um, just delete the lights there. It's just cleaner. It will remove all the nodes for you and everything. If you are in another camera, you'll see that well, we'll just go a new camera now. So I'm literally in this Perse 1 camera now. You'll see that the light, the shadow now no longer is parented to this camera that I'm in. Um, it's actually parented to the purse camera, just middle click dragging that in. And then you can see that now that light's following this camera. So it's sort of parented to that. If you don't want it parented, you can un, um, you can break the link with that button. And that means that now it's locked in the scene um, rotation. You'll still see um, if you've got these guys on, you'll still see the how hard, but now it's like locked like to the to the world, really. Um, now to bring that back, uh, you just go like unlock it and now it's going to be moving with the camera again. So it's, you can see it's locked with the camera and that's good for modeling and, and animating and stuff. Um, if you are in another camera, um, it's locked to the other camera. So to switch the cameras, you just press the button again. And this is create if it doesn't exist. And if it already exists, it just reparents the light to this camera. So now you can see we've got the, the HUD on this camera. If we go back to the perspective camera, the HUD disappears until we create and reparent it. And now it's like snap back to this um, there. So that's just something to know about that fix viewport light tool. All right, so if you wanna do that a lot quicker, I even have a, a, a different and even a little bit of a better way of doing this. Um, and that is if you come into our browser, you can come into um, this grid planes scene. And this is all of that already ready to go. So you just double click on that guy. And that's got a ball, which is representative of our character, as you can see. And uh, all we really need to do now is to reference in Aang into the scene. And, you know, it's kind of ready to go. So you can move this guy around. Um, so let's do that. So we'll just grab back to our community rigs and we've got Aang. Let's just reference him straight in here. Um, this one as well is, uh, I had to save that scene in my 2020, so it's already in the sRGB gamma in the legacy mode. Just be aware of that. Um, it's not using ASUS. Uh, we've got this here with the viewport setup. This is set up for standard surface shaders, which I'm going to show you how to do in a little bit. Uh, so we do need to open that fixed viewport lights and just, you know, correct those. So you can come into the fixed viewport lights tool. I'm going to close that down actually. and in again just so it opens all nice and small and then we come in here and we'll go oh we were on lambits and blends because this is a new scene now again doesn't really matter if you do that you can actually just come in to uh one of these controls and just take your directional and your hdr and sort of get that where you want it again i would in this case i come into stingray or unity we were using unity before so we can use that again and just get that kind of in the ballpark Fixed viewport. I just want to contrast these guys a little bit to make that a little bit cooler. So remembering that's really contrasting up the viewport just makes it look a little bit better. If you know anything about grading, um, like in Nuke and After Effects and stuff like that, you can see that um, this is kind of what we're doing is like a, a poor man's version of that. Just getting that shadow here to that. Now, the one thing about this scene here is that we do also have, if we switch on lights again, we've got um, some rim lights. So that's the only difference between the fixed viewport doesn't come with rims at the moment. I'd like to add them, but just haven't coded that yet. In this scene, I've just added two directional lights, which are our rims, which give us this kind of nice rim light on him um, there. 
And that goes for the Natalie scene too that you just saw. So that's kind of interesting that you can just grab those and move those around. And you'll see if you point them down, you know, start to get a strong shadow. So I keep them pretty light um, there, something like that. And uh, that's pretty good with the key light, which is really coming from, you know, that guy there. You can move that around. Uh, to get rid of those, again, show, get rid of the lights and we're in a pretty good place. Um, uh, with these lights, I'll just take the controls off. So I usually, now that I'm happy with that light, I'll get rid of that. Sorry, that's the light guys here. They're in the right order now. So those two guys will bring up that. Um, now that we've got a really nice viewport scene um, built with the pre-made scene, I thought I'd show you um, how we can make the different color variations. So let's do that. So this ground you can't select and that's by choice because you don't want to be selecting it when you're animating, but you can come into the ground layer here and select it um, as well. Like this is also a setup that I use for modeling. So I'll just bring in a model and start modeling this way too. You don't have to be um, animating. This is a very speedy viewport. As long as you don't have a super old computer, this is like fine to model in. I model with the lights on and everything working and it's just way better. Um, so just uh, that guy there is the ground layer. We just had to take the reference off. Otherwise you can't select it. It's a little R guy. Now I can select that. And now we can put in um, and tweak this grid shader. Now in the shaders, I'm gonna close that down again so we can open this in new. In the shader presets MAMB, this is like Maya shaders. So when it saves them out, it saves them as a Maya file. Um, this guy here is like a different one that makes multi-renderer stuff. So it, all the shaders are saved in a generic format that all the renderers recognize. This one, it's going to bring them in as either blends or standard surface or AI standard surface or your render man shaders or your redshift shaders. Um, so here you can see I've got like this grid blue mat that I've previously made and I'll double click and we can bring that in there. Um, this one does not exist in Zoo yet, but I'll probably add it. If you now change the background to that blue, you can see how we've, we've now got a blue thing. You can go in and grab those lights that you saw before and you can color them blue as well. It makes it look a little bit nicer um, in the background, but that's like preference. You can change your background color in the settings and preferences, color settings um, in the 3D views. This is the, the two colors that are in the viewport there, the gradient that you're seeing. So you can change the colors there. Um, and you can change the grid to any sort of a color. Um, if you want to manually change the color, like just say we had a green background or just say we wanted a green floor. Um, and especially that you guys don't even have the blue at the moment, because at the moment, I think I've only got these guys in the pack. Um, if you want to change the color of that, you can come into, um, the shader. So you just select it, come into the last tab. That's actually on ho my hotkeys. That's control shift and N just selects the shader. Um, and then you can come into the color channel here. And then that's literally the, the white lines and, and blue um, guy there. So if we want to change that to green or any other color, we can come into the hue and then just, you know, move that around to green and you've done that. Or we can make that, you know, uh, a gray and then darken that color. Uh, we could make it like quite a white color. And then we could grab this guy and make, I don't know, red lines, um, for example, you know. Uh, so this is really, uh, this is really customizable and up to you and what your background kind of is. So if you have a look at here, I've just done some sort of defaults that, by the way, Zoo Tools, when you hit Alt B, it gives you a couple more colors, like a couple more than Maya has. So there we've got like kind of a very dark gray um, and we might want to use this dark alpha that blends kind of nicely with that. But as we get like brighter to that one, maybe we want to use that one there. And it's just sort of max mixing in a bit better. Now here, that's not mixing in as well as what I'd liked. So I can come across to the shader and then I'm just going to double click and get out of the way and then grab this guy and we can make that a bit brighter. And just have it blend in a bit nicer as well. So that's sort of how all that's working. And Again, your rig should play pretty much in real time as depends on the speed of the rig and, um, and how well that's, as you saw with Natalie, just scrubbing through that, that's playing fine on my box. So that's there. Now I'll take a little break now and I'll come back and we're going to do um, the, the 
uh, standard surface Arnold render um, with Zoo. Um, but before I do that, let's just save a, a screenshot now that we like that. And we'll come in to the Mycenes browser. I want to take a screenshot for that guy. So we'll just go snapshot replace. And now we can just move this guy around to where we want him to be. And we've got a nice icon there. Like, obviously I could change the background and do whatever, but that's kind of the Anim start scene ready to go. A convention of mine that you'll see in Zootles, I'll often take just to be different, a photo of the grid and that says, hey, this is a start scene. So I'll do something like that and then snapshot that. And you'll see the grid in the background. It's like, okay, that's the Anim start. That's the rig. I get it. Um, it's different. Um, if you have a look at our rigs here, see that's the start scene with the grid, whereas these are the rigs just by themselves. Um, these are all the different shaders uh, versions that we have. Uh, these are like different animation scenes. That's the start scene. And then these are just the rigs. So that's sort of my convention there. So I want to add in one more, which has a different shaded ring. So I'm going to, we're going to open up, um, we're going to open up this, the, this rig and we're going to convert the shaders to Arnold shaders or Arnold compatible shaders, which we call the standard surface shaders and maybe add a bit of um, subsurface scattering and render it out in Arnold. And I'll show you how easy that is as well. All right. So back again, but uh, just remembered a couple of things I wanted to show you guys before we move on to converting renderers to the nice um, standard surface shaders, which render beautifully in Arnold. Let's just load this cyborg rig. I've previously made this to be the standard surface. Actually, don't do that. I'm gonna come into the uh, Anim start scene here for the cyborg. Um, this is Truong's rig uh, with advanced skeleton. Let's come in and just wanted to show you, this has got um, the, let, let's just fix up the viewport. So everything doesn't come in always awesome. So we can go to there. Um, I can change the background to black. Uh, let's come into the fixed viewport and just contrast this up a bit with those guys uh, there. Now, um, one of the things I just wanted to show is to close that and then open the HDR sky domes. If we do have the sky domes, they are compatible with the viewport, um, fixed viewport light rig. So that means if we start double clicking on these guys, That should be changing. There we go. Not sure what happened there. Just a little viewport update bug, I think, for the Maya. And uh, you can see that, you know, this is changing. Now, to get a better result out of this, if we come into the Maya Scenes browser again, just control um, middle click scrolls in, in these browsers too, by the way. I'm going to reference that over to this guy here. So we can always like come in and find where that rig lives, which is there. And now I can come into um, that. And so this is the, the Blin rig or whatever that guy was. And we want to replace the reference now with a better rig, um, which is the standard service that I made last night. So we just come in and go replace reference. And we're going we're gonna to come in and fix shaders on these rigs. Um, I'm just going to come in and bring in the standard surface. That just has like a, a bit of a better quality metal shader on it. So that should just literally be replacing that rig for the renderer rig, which is this one. Um, just so happens that the standard surface rigs also look better in the viewport too, as you can see, um, a bit nicer. Now that's a little bit dark. Sorry about that beeping. I uh, really have to get that fixed. If we come in here to the fixed viewport, um, we can now come back over because this is standard surface shaders now. And I'll do this and then we can uh, increase our lighting, which we could just do it here to just make that a bit, a bit bigger. Come to the HDR sky domes. And now, you know, there are a lot, a lot of sky domes here. We can just select them all. Um, and you can double click them and see what happens. If you go viewport, I think I tagged some of them. I mean, all these guys can be tagged with these tags. Some of them I tagged with viewport. That just means if we type viewport. Sorry, didn't type properly. Uh, these are a bit nicer in the viewport. So that's just replacing, you know, the HDR sky dome. Let's make that a little bit prettier. Looks good when you close these guys down. 
uh, you know, different sky domes will uh, affect the reflections quite a lot in there. And we can zoom in and have a look at a bit better that. So I just thought I'd show that there um, in the tool, like there's a bit of anti-aliasing on the edging here. Um, in the fixed viewport tool, you can come in in the, in the bigger version um, and we can switch our anti-aliasing to 16, can make that get a little bit better too. So there's a lot of settings here um, that you can use to improve your viewport stuff. Check out the video on the site. I'm about to do one on fixed viewport, hopefully. Um, so I just thought I'd show you that you can change the, the HDR sky domes are there. The other thing is if we come back into uh, the, the folder that we're currently making this guy. So we want to make um, another rig here. But before I do that, I thought I'd just show you this as well. If we open up in Explorer, um, the way that this works is every time you save a file, it wants to save it into a folder. So we've got community rigs set here. That's that folder there. It's set that path. Um, everything in there, it sort of goes one folder deep and then looks for all the MAs or in the current folder. Uh, it's just worth noting that every time you hit save, it is saving to, you know, a folder of its own. Now, in the case of um, this guy here, the start LMBT, um, it's just a good idea to, like, to know that you can actually just cut those and put them in the same folder as the Ang rig. So you can mix everything in here. And this is a good idea um, if you're using this as kind of a pack like we do in ZooTools where you want all the textures to be local to the file that you're opening, which in this case is that one with the reference scene. It just means that it's gonna find that rig even if you move the folder around. And you really should, um, if you open that scene, the start scene as well, it's a good idea if you are gonna use this like a pack to give to people, then, um, you know, if you've got absolute paths, everything is fine. But if you are moving the, the thing around, this rig here that I'm just opening, oh, of course that's not gonna open now because in a different place. So we can now just go a refresh. Okay, and it looks the same, but now that's that's pointing now to the this location because it's found them again. We can come back here and I often just delete those. It's just a little thing. You don't have to do this, but it helps with re relative pathing and textures and things. You want sort of everything that the file's referring to to be in the same folder. So now that we've opened this guy up again, uh, I, I didn't save that out, which was annoying. I didn't hit save. So if you had the, the grid shader in there and everything, then um, then everything's gonna work nicely. And then if you do, if you are using the viewport rig, which we can do again really quickly, I'm just gonna do it uh, because it really doesn't take very long. We go to the grid planes. This time I'm gonna do it a bit differently. I'm gonna import that one into the scene like that. Now we see the IBL in the background, so we'll get rid of that. We want that to be untone mapped or probably even unity neutral. Um, it's good. And we need to switch on all these guys there. And now we're back to where we were, delete that. Um, it's pretty good. And we can come into the fixed viewport again and just, con I just use this for the contrast and give it down a bit. So we're in a nice place. Um, of course, in the, if you want to get rid of that little ball, that's just those two guys there as well. So now that I've got that, um, of course we made it to the light, but I'll just save over the current file. So we can now save that in the scenes browser back to the community rigs. We want to save over that file. I'll just now go in the info. You can grab that, the name from there and then save it. And we'll save over the file there. Oh, because it's in a different folder, it duplicates the rigs. Um, that's something that I'll get Dave to fix. If we open that up, now, so we've got two rigs that are named the same because one's in the new folder. It's always trying to save it into that folder. So this is only when you're doing rigs, this little step here. And then we can go paste and replace it. Okay. And then I'll come back to that and then take that out. Delete. And now when we refresh, you know, that, that is this scene now. Um, now that we've got that, uh, like it's just a good idea that in the viewport light, we do have the sky dome and that is referring to a texture. So if we come into here, that texture there, if we browse for it, it's called the, the post armor plot sense, this little one that comes with zoo tools. Um, so we can literally browse for that fi file. 
I'm just uh, grabbing it here. All right, stop that. So you can find that post armor plots HDR file and copy that into the ang rig file. It's just a good idea. That means that if you move this folder around, like on a USB or something, um, it also is referring to that HDR Skydome as well, which is a really small one. That's why it's really blurry because it comes with Zootle. So um, the, the ones that we have in the Skydome browser, this guy are a higher resolution, so they don't look so blurred. Um, the, the blurry one's great for the viewports, nice and light, and it looks fine in reflections, doesn't look good in the background, always switch it off. Um, so I just thought I'd mention those couple of things there to, to finish off um, how that works. Now we want to create um, the, the Arnold render scene, which is really quite easy. So once you've got um, something with Lambert shaders on, Lambert's are handled pretty well in Arnold. They'll, they'll go pretty well. So let's just, before we even convert the shaders, um, we can come into our light presets here. Now, before I um, do even do this, I thought I'd mention that to really quickly render out stuff, um, usually I like all rigs to be in centimeters. So that means if you create a cube, that cube is one centimeter by cent one centimeter. Now different rigs, are, uh, some of them are really small down here and some of them are the correct size. But a rig like that, if you, if you scale that, like this guy I reckon would be 160 centimeters or a bit bigger. If you square that, like that's roughly how big the character should be in real world scale. That's just something to take note of. So if you've got a really small rig, you should scale it up. Um, that's a convention in Maya, which is just good to know. So if we come into um, this guy here, we've also got these scene studio rim lights. So this one here, this is my favorite light setup. And it just goes bam and creates a light setup for you um, in the renderer that you've loaded. So one of those guys, um, it won't do V-Ray yet. Um, we've just got to support a couple more light settings for V-Ray. Um, and then it's loaded uh, Arnold and everything's ready to go. So that is as simple as it is, just that one button. And then you can click um, render. Now that's previous uh, renderer that I've have in the background. So just wait for that to go away. Ignore this. And now we're rendering, you know, that rig. So we're rendering the, the viewport rig, uh, which just has Lambert's and you can see already it looks really nice. So the Lambert's just out of the box on this character, they work pretty well. So everything is, is working and everything sort of re respects um, this linear tone map stuff, the stuff that you do in here. Like if we want to make that look slightly better, by the way, I've just got the light selected. So if I just hit Alt Q on my hotkeys, that's deselect. And then, um, we can come in to say this the, the Unity the tone map that we had before, and I'll come in with um, the fixed viewport, and we can gamma these up and contrast them a little bit to get a nice look. So everything's sort of supported by Arnold. You'll also notice if we switch it off um, and we put lights on now, there is with shadows there, there is um, a little bit of, uh, you know, it should be fairly accurate now. Um, the this rig should look fairly good, you know, with all these light settings on compared to when you render. However, we've got the wrong shader. So the Lambert shaders are too bright. That's partly why we want to use the standard surface shaders as well. Now, um, I mentioned the, the, the light presets. If we come into here, um, we've got a lot of light pre presets. So the defaults are these guys. These are sort of the most common ones that look good in different situations. Like we click this guy, just double click, it deletes that and then rebuilds it. Hit the help on any of our tools to, you know, to know exactly what everything does. So that's taking a little while to come in, but you can see it's now deleted all the lights and built that setup. Uh, we could have like a bit of a dark moody one just for something different. And if you select the lights just by clicking on the lights there, you can see, you know, that the lights are coming in in a different way. So uh, let's go back to maybe this one. I think that one's just a big soft light above. You know, some of them are really simple. Don't go thinking that you need a lot of lights. Like sometimes the simple light setups look really nice as well. Let's have a look at this one too. You can see where the lights are and, and what's happening. So that's a good way of learning lighting is just looking at what looks good here and then reverse engineering it. I do like the hero creature ones and the Natalie ones too and the statue ones. Uh, these are just ones that I went around, like you got these purple things. 
Um, one of the things that I'm doing here, actually, is I'm rendering in CPU. So I've got a lot of GPUs. If you do have a GPU, that means like uh, 10, 10 series card, 20 series card, 30 series card, 30 series cards and 20s are really good. I've got four 1080s and a couple of 1070s. So we can come in here, so that two 1080s, two 1070s, go to GPU, we can switch that over. I usually just switch that to 10 for start. It's not the camera AA. Undo that, keep that there and put that at 10. And that will make my renders significantly faster. We can switch the grid off again with that. And now we can get this really moody lighting uh, with this backlit stuff. Like looks a bit freaky on this character, looks good on him. <laughs> So different lighting setups look good on different characters, um, which is just something to be aware of. Uh, and you can see, you know, that's pretty good. Looks pretty nice there. Um, the other thing that I've got to is, let's go to something a little bit more standard. Uh, we do have a bunch of shaders once you're doing that as well in the shader presets. So. Obviously we can use the grids. Now something about these grids, they're using procedural grid shaders. Arnold, last I checked, does not support them, which is a real bummer actually. Um, if you come into just the ramp shaders, nope, the grids, this is just plain grids, right? With no offsets on them, so it's good for this scene. Um, we wanna use the standard surface to so bring that in. I believe that the grid won't render I don't know why Arnold's not supporting, like all the renders support these grids except for Arnold, which is really bizarre. It just doesn't support those grids. So I will start to add in the future, in the planes, I've got these ones down here, this Maya blue one, which is quite interesting, just as JPEGs rather than having procedural grids. It means you can't change them too much, but I've just got a nice JPEG in there that gives you that sort of an effect um, with a nice grid. There's also these Polyhaven ones, um, and you can search for things like brick. And we could now add that um, shader there. These are all from Polyhaven, so you can download a lot more. I've got a shader builder coming that's gonna be able to suck up all these things and get in. Now that looks a bit weird, cause it's like a, a bit big. I mean, it looks a bit weird cause on a curve anyway, but um, you can make some of these better actually. If you just go to the hyper shade, this is a hyper shade thing now. Uh, come in here and just find that shader, select it and find it. We can just change all these place textures uh, to repeat a few times. So I'll do it in the channel box cause it'll do it on all of them. So we can repeat that maybe three times and that'll make that smaller. So just so you know that you can do that. Um, let's click on this rough plasterboard as well. It's having to, this is just converting the images to TX, which is Arnold's file format. So you can see that you've got different things there. I think some of the cement ones look pretty decent, or concrete. Like this rough, or maybe that one. Some of them are better than others. And of course this is weird because it's on a psych. Um, but I did have a play around with them and, and realized that you can play with the bump settings too. I'm not digging that one. Anyway, you get the idea. You can make a lot of these shaders. Um, the grid shader, by the way, the one that I just showed you then, um, that is like super, super, um, oh, we just got that. These, that's just like a grid that I made in Photoshop and just whacked it on. So these are extremely easy things to make. And then you can save your, sorry, and beeping. And then you can save your own there. So. Um, we'll go back to that grid texture. So this one, I've already imported it. So it's already in the hypershade. Every time you double click, they're importing them in. This one's just saying, hey, it already exists. Do you want to use the existing one? I'm like, yep. Please just use the existing shader. We'll get that one back. Uh, I did want to just show you guys that another tool that you can use that, you know, I don't, I haven't really promoted much is this focus puller. This is a great little tool here. I'm going to turn that off just for now. So we're back here. Uh, I'm going to grab, come in here and we're going to close those because focus puller is that one. It was just up now because we're in the Arnold renderer. This is where you change your renderers. We are in Arnold. Don't be in Maya because it won't work. Um, we can create a distance rig on the current camera. So let's go create distance rig. Switch my hotkeys on too. I keep forgetting. So what that's done is now, um, 
we have this guy. And if you select it, it's going to select the actual loc. It's not a locator, it's a locator control in, in the scene. So you see, if you select that, it actually selects that. So let's do that again. See, it select that. Um, this is the focus. So I'll just snap that to his head. Yeah. And now we can come up close and we can render that again. Let's wait a little bit. And we want to switch the DOF on now. We'll switch the switch it on. And then you got this aperture, which we should be able to bring up. And now we've got this sweet depth of field. And with the GPU rendering, you can see that's not too bad. Um, I really love Redshift for this. Redshift's just so fast, um, that renderer. But you can do really nice depth of field rendering and stuff. And you can see how easy that is. So we've got like a, a locator there. And that means that if I move in and out, that distance between that control, which is a nice little light rig that we've got here, these are all the Arnold settings. You don't have to go swimming and fishing for them. For each renderer, it's really lovely. Um, you change, you know, all the curvature and blade count, and you can see it's getting more blurry because we're closer in on him, and even other things are out of focus. Um, a good idea would be to snap that to the eyes, and now you know that the eyes are always going to be in focus, no matter how close we get to that. Aperture of two point one is a lot, so um, you know, we can make that a bit sharper, or you can make it super blurry. It's going to be a bit weird. Yeah, so really fun stuff and make your character look good. Um, you can render this out in sequences for your animation and you know, yada, yada, a lot of things. If you want to delete that, just hit the delete button. Um, I believe you should switch off the depth of field as well. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. Now, the last thing that I want to do is add a little bit of subsurface on this. This guy looks pretty good as Lambert's got to say, he looks really nice. But uh, let's convert this now to um, Lambert's and um, see how it goes. So I'm just going to take this off there and we're here now um this again is just we haven't really done anything we haven't saved the file yet just checking out what he looks like we've just brought in this rig um by himself uh the doff is still on in the viewport which is that guy so if you, it's looking a bit weird just click that off in the viewport um so i'm just going to reopen that scene it just means we don't have all our shaders that we brought in and I want to convert his shaders over now to um, standard surface shaders, which is Maya's default um, shader type now. Looks really nice in the viewport with um, the viewport lights. Um, it has like nice reflective properties, got a metal in the shader. It's basically the same as AI standard surface, which is Arnold's, but it's just now you don't need Arnold, which is great. V-Ray uh, renders with it, which is really nice. Um, I, I would like the other renderers to do that too, but I, I've noticed only V-Ray handles it at the moment. Um, very easy to convert to other shaders from the standard surface too um, for us. So let's have a look at this. So what we want to do is we want to select um, all of the mesh here. We want to convert all these shaders. So if you have a look in, uh, I'm just opening up the hypershade. If you have a look up here, you'll see that, you know, all these are like Lambert, 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 and they haven't named them very well, which is annoying, but whatever, like that's just what they are. But if you click on the shader itself, you can see it's Lambert 14, but don't trust the name. There is the Lambert. It's definitely a Lambert, right? So if we come in here now, we can use our convert shaders multi-renderer. And this one here will convert, you know, the, the current tool, the current selection. So all the shaders that's currently assigned to this to the AI standard surface, which would be the Arnold shader. So you're welcome to convert it to the Arnold shader if you prefer. Um, if we want to convert it to the standard surface, which is my favorite shader at the moment, because it works in the viewport and in Arnold without Arnold opened, um, we can now go to standard surface, a pretty identical shader to Arnold. I mean, it's Autodesk, so it's the same stuff, has a nice subsurface as well. We can now just go remove the previous shaders, so that will delete all the Lambert's after the conversion. It supports pretty much um, all the main stuff. It doesn't support a few things like opacity. It doesn't support um, normals and bump yet. Um, so if you've got bump maps and normal maps, you have to reassign them. Uh, this guy's only got a couple of textures on on um, his eyes and his, his skin. So it's a really easy conversion for this tool. And I tested it yesterday on all these different free rigs. And the only one that the, the shader thing really messed up on was the Deadpool rig. There was an error and I've since fixed that. So in Zoo Tools, like the next version, which will be 2.0. 2.7.4 will have fixed that for Deadpool. It just had a weird negative value on roughness. 
No, you don't need these things. So that means that this, this is now standard service shaders. So you can see, even though it says Lambert underscore standard, um, that's really designed for this to be like skin or body, um, which we could rename here now. That wouldn't be a problem. Uh, that's now a standard surface shader type, as you can see there. And you can see it's gone a bit darker because in the viewport, Myers viewport um, isn't calibrated to standard surface. Arnold and everything is, and all my lights and everything is is standardized to uh, the standard surface shader. So that means that if you go fix viewport now, this is kind of why I built this tools because I wanted to use the cool new shaders. We can just go create reparent light. Turn off the lights. Apologies, my family just got home, so there might be a, a couple of kids in the background saying some stuff now. Uh, but I'll quickly finish this up. So we've got, um, yeah, I'm just going to take off the, the viewport light there. Uh, we can, you know, contrast this up again. Same sort of thing as we've done before. Go to Stingray or, or Unity Neutral looks pretty nice. And then we've got really nice. So this it being a standard surface shader now, being darker, we're now setting it to standard surface and everything will look good. Now, the advantage of this is in Arnold, Arnold is calibrated for the standard surface shaders. Everything works much better in the standard surface shaders. So um, even if you've got a free rig, you can convert them over pretty easily. Now, this is going to look, you know, relatively sim similar. So we want to remove um, this viewport. So I just hit the delete button. So we've got nothing. It keeps the lights on. You just switch that off if you want. Um, if we want to come here and render that with the studio rim lights, which is the same as what I did before, um, we've got, you know, these new settings here. Let's now, that should have built it, has built, you know, that with the lights. They are just hidden because I had those off. That's our setup. We can now click Arnold and build that uh, there. Of course, I don't have the, the grid shader in the background yet um, at the moment because this is a new scene. But you can see that's looking even better than what we had with the Lamberts because, you know, now the shaders are nice and they're not Lamberts and they're not converting. Um, however, you know, you do have some extras now in Arnold. So we can come in here. And one of the things that I thought I'd show is just switching on some, some subsurface scattered on the skin. So this is just kind of fun and good for your own characters and stuff. So we've got our, um, our texture here, which is his skin texture. Now, usually um, the way that it works is um, I've got this all on the other monitor, but this body standard material here, the subsurface stuff's all just down there and we want the skin to be subsurface-y. Um, a good way of testing this is in my default light setup here is just to go, hey, we want everything hidden except for that rim light. That means that now the light's sort of coming through the back of him. And uh, I can see that there's some, looks like there's already some subsurface scattering on him, but I think that's just more the light bouncing around from here. It's not actually subsurface. So I can select the shader here. And now what we can do is we can bump up that subsurface and you'll see a huge difference is it's coming through as white, right? Um, and in fact, the whole texture sort of disappears and the, and the shader turns white if we've got all the lights on and this isn't great. But straight away we can go, oh, well, how much subsurface do we want? Let's go and put in there like something like 0.3 maybe, I think from memory. And we're try we, what we want to do is we want to get a little bit of subsurface. This is a huge light coming through the back of him. We want his ears to light up a little bit, but not so much in the rest of him. So that's still a bit much. Um, point, maybe 0.15. I was doing this on a bunch of characters last night. So that's a, probably a good level of subsurface. Just his ears will light up a little bit more. Now what we want to do is we want to take that color and pump it into that color there. So that's just something that Arnold does. Other renderers sometimes it just works. So what we need is we need that little guy there to, to pump into that color there. So I'll just drag it in like that. Sorry, I'm always using the hypershade on the other monitor. Um, so now we can see we've got the skin color coming through now and everything's working and we just set that, that guy there. Um, random walk is good. Everything works out of the box. That's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Um, let's now bring the lights back and unhide those. And what do I have? I've got the CPU. Every time you start a new scene, you do have to switch the GPU over if you do have a GPU card. Sorry, let's go. Shift five of my hotkeys brings those render settings. It's just that guy. Um, and we got a system. This just makes it render faster for me and for anyone that's got nice GPU cards. 
um, multiple GPU cards only helps with rendering like this. The viewport stuff and playing back animation that only uses one card. I've only got 1080s, which are very old cards now. So all that stuff is fine for viewport. Just, I thought I'd say that. Um, system GPU, yeah. And then we just have to switch that to 10 in Arnold. Always go there. 10 is just a good number to let it stop and render. Um, so now we can see that the subsurf scattering is coming through on those ears. Um, of course, it takes a little bit longer to render. That's the downside of subsurfs. But, you know, with all this stuff, this is way better than it used to be. Um, maybe it's even a little bit much, like maybe it's lighting up a little bit much. There is a huge big um, area light, sorry, area light coming directly behind this character, which is not a realistic light setup. But you can see that it's there. It's a bit strong. Um, you could also come in uh, to the shader as well. And uh, I'll often use, by the way, rather than using the shader there, I often use our shader manager, just a bit easier to use. We can switch the specular on and what I'll show you this does is it makes him all shiny. So let's just let that render a little bit. If you click on that button, it selects the shader. So we've now made him shiny, but this is too much obviously for this character. Another thing to do is I'd like to make him actually sub -deed. Uh But we can bring that specular roughness up now to be quite rough, like about 0.6 or something. And that'll give him a nice, you know, kind of like look to his skin as well, like little highlights and stuff um, as well. So, as you know, you can just do that stuff there. It's washing out a little bit. It's going a little bit white, but um, you can, sometimes I'll even change that to a blue, which is kind of counterintuitive. That's an old school trick is to make things kind of like blue skin. Often looks kind of cool when it goes a bit bluey in the specular highlight. It's a bit of a fake, but old school. That eyelash color there looks like it's gone white. I don't know if that was supposed to be white, but I'll just make it dark. Maybe he's got white eyelashes. Um, a little bit weird around the mouth and stuff there, but that's, I'm just going to leave it there. That's enough for rendering for today. Um, you can also put subsurf scattering on the clothes. Um, that can like qu qu quite good. Put specular highlights, like I like to make that um, a bit leathery. Looks, looks pretty cool. Um, so there's lots of stuff you can do with the rendering. I just thought that would give you a bit of an idea that you can really make stuff look sweet in the viewport um, with our tools and you can convert these rigs and make rig libraries and stuff like that. Now that that's been saved, the last thing would be to save it out. So um, I can just come in here to the Arnold lights and just delete all that. Delete that guy there. Um, switch off Arnold. Yeah, we're good. And then I like to like any shaders that are left behind. I'll delete the unused node that just cleans up any shaders like the, the shader for the background um, from the scene. Now we can save this guy in the scenes browser here. So Aang Rig, let's grab his name, copy that. And then we can go save Aang Rig FTRD, which is the name of that shader. Um, it's trying to save V-Ray because V-Ray somehow opened on this scene. I think it got mucked up with another rig, so that won't happen for you. Uh, we've got it here. Um, I can make a nice screenshot there. Obviously, I'd render it and then make the screenshot nice, but I'm just going to be super lazy and do that with the dark background. Um, now that we've got that as well, same thing as before. This is only for rigs. This is not for... I wouldn't ordinarily do this, but I like to grab... Um, this, these two guys cut them and paste them into the same folder as all the other reference stuff, like in there. That just means that everything is now referencing locally. It's just a nice clean way of doing that. And that guy doesn't need to be around anymore. Yes. And we've saved that there. Uh, refresh. Um, something to do with our rigs is if we're in the Arnold renderer now, you'll see that all these guys will disappear. That's because it's looking for like a suffix on the shader, uh, like a standard surface. So Maya is a standard surface shader. This one's Lambert, so it's finding them. So you can have a look at the help for that tool and it tells you what suffixes to use. Um, that's just if you're using a lot of renderers like we are. Uh, most studios won't have this problem. Um, in Zoo Rigs Hive, it's like we've got loads of rigs and stuff. You can see that now by filtering to Arnold, it's finding all of the Arnold shaders on the rigs. So it's simplifying that quite a lot. Redshift, there's all the Redshift ones. Whereas with Maya, 
Um, these are all the viewport scenes that are stand surface and Lamberts and whatnot. Um, just thought I'd show you that. So that's a cool little thing if you do have a lot of renderers and you want to filter the stuff out. And it's also while you're using our rigs. So there you go, guys. Uh, a lot covered there. Um, we've done a lot and rendered out and done a lot of things. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I will polish this up and put them into shorter demos and put them on the Create 3D Characters channel. Just, I thought I'd like let all this out. I've got so much stuff in ZooTools. Um, it's just, thank you for making it this far. It's really good um, to be able to just tell everyone what we've got <laughs> a little bit in there because making really polished tutorials for, you know, hundreds of features, hundreds, you've got hundreds and hundreds of features is actually like a full-time job and quite time consuming. Plus I'm coding and, and helping Dave out and, and building characters and, and animating and doing all sorts of things. So it's just a lot of work on our side. And um, I really appreciate everyone who's buying the tools. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, thanks for supporting us. Cheers.